Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our weekly Team Perseverance team call. My name is Kristen Atkins. I think I know most of you, um, but in case you don't know, um, usually my husband Dave is running the calls. Um, he's been doing these calls for the last, I don't know, four years now. <laughs> like on every Monday night, I think we missed like two or three so far. Um, but this is where we come together as a team um, and we do call trainings on different topics to help you guys become better coaches. Um, and recently we have been kind of handing the ball over to other coaches on our team and guest speakers because it's really great for all of us to hear all different perspectives from all different leaders because everybody has something special that they want to give. So tonight's call is going to be led by my best friend, if in case you didn't know, Kelly Della Vecchia. She's a one-star diamond coach. She's been a coach for how long, Kel? Two and a half years? Yep, it'll be three years in July. Two and a half years. Um, and her little sidekick and success partner, Melanie Yoakum, is going to be kicking off with recognition tonight. Um, another amazing coach on our team. And I just, before we get started, um, something I just wanted to say about Kelly is that the topic for tonight is um, building team culture through challenge groups. And for those of you who don't personally know Kelly, um, something you should know about her is when she puts her heart and soul into something, she does it 150, 60%. And she, she does it with love and she always, it always comes from her heart. And it's no surprise to me that her challengers and her coaches have had such great success in their challenge group because I know that she pours her heart and her soul into her challenge groups. And I know that's why there, there is a really great team culture on team um, Fierce and Fab. I was going to say Fab and Fierce. Fierce and Fab. Um, so I know that that's where that's coming from. So really take some notes. Kelly's going to give you some good tidbits. And I know she has a lot of her team here to kind of back her up and and cheer her on, and um, that's it. I'm gonna turn it over to Melanie. Oh, I didn't say the date, did I? Today is Monday, April 3rd. Happy April, guys. Um, so we are coming into spring. Melanie's going to go over our uh, recognition and announcements, and then Kelly's gonna take it away. All right? Go ahead, Mel. All now. right. Hey, 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 hey y'all. Hey, hey, <laughs> all right, so um, first of all, I'm gonna announce and, and my feedback. feedback. Mm. That's gonna I'll mute really myself and then I'll. Un okay, yeah, because that, okay, yay, yay, that worked. And then I'll mute myself when you go. All right. So, uh, first of all, I want to remind everybody that we have Super Saturday. Super Saturday is coming up. For some people, it's Super Sunday. I know in my area in Indianapolis, it's Sunday, but it is not too late to get signed up and try to go to an event. It's really, really important to get to live events. They are total game changers. So it's not too late to get in the game and get your tickets and just go. Um, uh, we are also going to be having a coach refresh coming up, and that is April 19th and 20th. So follow the Team P page, and we'll show you how to get linked in with that. But it's April 19th and 20th. It's an hour, and some of the coaches are just going to take little 10-minute pockets, and it's a great time for you to really kickstart your business. So if you're a coach who maybe you've been around for a while and you've kind of lost that fire, this is a great time to reignite it. Or if you're a coach who's brand new and you're like, what do I do? This is a great thing to, uh, to plug into. So that is also coming. Um, I'm going to go into our recognition. So uh, we started this new recognition, so I'm really excited about it. It's our Team Perseverance Weekly Top 10. So on that list, we have Lindsay Kaufman, we have Kelly Della Vecchia, we have Allison Cross, Devin Wheaton, Candace Feldman, Sharice Nolson, Melody Linville, Maria Romano, Tyann Sanchez, and Shanna Carlucci, and that is our top 10. And then we also have our um, Team Perseverance Week Leg Team Volume starting out in the 300 Club. We have Sydney Larice at 330, Michelle Fry at 337, Elena Mignon, at 360, Cami Cowart at 360, Gina Strecco at 360, Bob Strecco at 390, Darlene Champ 440, Maureen Garrett 450, Melanie Yoakum 450, Lindsay Medvin 450, and Tom Wheaton at 450. In the 500 Club, we have Elizabeth Mullenbrook at 965, Kelly Della Vecchia at 937, Michelle Della Sala at 900, Devin Wheaton at 795. Mike Della Sala at 657 and Shannon Larice at 638. In the 1000 Club, we have Jennifer Holdman at 1035, 
Tony Carlucci at 1075, Kristen Atkins at 1120, Lindsay Kaufman at 1140, Jeff Nolson 1223, Denise Brobson 1620, and Stacy Larice 1642. In the 2000 Club, we have Sharice Nolson at 2063, David Atkins at 2478. At the 3000 Club, we have Tara Richmond at 3334, Shanna Carlucci at 3386. Kristen Atkins at 5,574. And in the $10,000 club, we have David Atkins in his first um, CBC at 11,623. So congratulations to our Team Perseverance Week Leg Team Volume for March 23rd through March 29th. So all of those names I just listed, congratulations. And if you are a working coach or a coach who wants to be a working coach, remember those names. Follow those people, see what they do, and then make it your own, and you will find success. So there is success to be had on this scene. So that is our recognition for tonight. Mel? All right. Yes. Um, just another uh, announcement I thought of. Um, so we also just started adding in monthly recognition of all the new coaches that have been added to Team Perseverance. Um, if you saw it the other day, we had a list for March 2017 of all the new coaches on our team. Please, please make sure when you sign up a new coach or your coaches sign up new coaches that you're adding them into the Team Perseverance team page as well as your own if you have your own. Um, that way they're getting plugged in across the board with all the leaders and, and to all of our information. Um, and that way if we do recognition for them, you know, if you go to tag them, they're actually in the group. It's really, um, we want that to kind of be our commonality place where all of, our, all of the coaches for all of our little teams are kind of all put together in our big Team Perseverance homepage. Okay, guys? And I think, is that it, Mel? Um, I just wanted to say a little bit about Kelly. I know you, you talked about a lot of things, but I just want to add a little bit. Um, first of all, I'm just really honored that she asked me to introduce her, and she is my little light bug, like, success partner. I'm so grateful for her. Um, I like to call her a shining light superstar spirit junkie. I am blessed to call her my success partner. Um, she's a wife to Ernie and um, I absolutely love, if you don't follow Kelly, you really should. Like she has such a beautiful light in her heart and she shares it so very well. And um, one of the things that I love that she does, she's got her hashtag flirt with your spouse. So that's really fun. I love to follow. You know, her most important job is mom of her children, her two boys, Nick and Vincent, and Vivi, a.k.a. Boss Lady, is her daughter. Um, as Kristen mentioned, she has the most beautiful heart and spirit. She leads with love, and it just exudes from her. And she's just an amazing woman and such an inspiration to all of us. You know, she knows how to get up after being knocked down to walk taller and to inspire all of us to see the world a little better. Um, she's a success starter, starter, some of her accolades, success starter. She is a diamond coach, a one-star lifetime uh, rank. She was recently certified in PIO with Kristen, so I'm excited to watch that journey unfold. And um, she's the founder of Team uh, Fierce and Fab. So she runs her team on positive energy, heartfelt motivation and support, and fierce and fabulous drive. So to Kelly, coaching is so much more than just a side job. It is a passion. It is, it is right from her heart. And it really just shows. She, she just shines from the inside out. So gratitude is an understatement of how I feel about this woman. And we are also blessed to have her on our larger team. So. With that, I thank you, Kelly, for leading us tonight. So everybody get ready to be inspired and take it away. Aw, thanks, Mel. I don't know if you wanna put it on mute just so we don't have any feedback. Thank you so much, Mel. I have to say that if um, hopefully one of these days somebody will come on, maybe it'll be us talking about success partners because I have to say, Melanie is definitely the yin to my yang. She's um, just so poised and I'm like the crazy <laughs> nutty one out of the two of us. But um, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. I have to say, I think she made me sound a lot cooler than I really am. <laughs> But anyway, yes, I am uh, 39 years old. I'm a mom of three. I am a classroom teacher. I've been a teacher now for 17 years. It feels like just yesterday that um, I just got hired for my teaching job, but already it's 17 years. I am happily married uh, to my husband, Ernie, and um, I will be celebrating my three-year uh, coaching journey as of July. 
And I'm so, so excited tonight to be able to um, talk to you about one of the topics that I am so extremely passionate about. It's one of my favorite things to talk about and my favorite part of coaching. And that is challenge groups and um, building a team culture through what we do day in and day out in our monthly online fitness groups. So um, I'm going to give you a lot of uh, really important nuggets of information. But before I go there, I felt like I kind of wanted you to get a picture of how my team started because um you know, I'm really passionate about this, and it's always nice to hear kind of some, you know, people's backstories. So my Beachbody journey began um, in June of 2014. Um, Chrissy had been inviting me into a challenge group for seven months. It took me seven months to say yes to be um, a part of one of her challenge groups. And um, my brother was getting married. I had to fit into a bridesmaid's dress. And finally, I gave in and said yes. And it was the best decision that I had ever made. And um, I'm just sorry I didn't say yes sooner. So I absolutely fell in love with the process. I fell in love with Shakeology and um, you know all of the products. I fell in love with the um, the team vibe and this positive um, life that really I was exposed to for the very first time. You know, the outside world can tend to be um, a little heavy sometimes, and there's a lot of negativity that floats out there. And it was such a breath of fresh air to, um, you know, have like-minded people who were all just trying to be happy and healthy and fit all in one place. So um, I fell in love. And um, I honestly, I think I was like two or three months, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, into my first challenge group. And I'm like, how do I continue? And she's like, whoa, 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 slow down. You're only three weeks into it. And I'm like, no, really, I need to do this. Like, I need to know how I can continue. And I became a coach um, the next month. And I went full steam ahead into uh, the business. I mean, I was absolutely madly in love with everything that we did. And, um, you know, I just wanted to share it with everybody because I was getting, um, you know, Chrissy said, the most eager challenger ever. Um, but I, I was, I was just so excited that I wanted to share it with the world. So I went full steam ahead with the business. And um, by December of 2014, I hit diamonds and I was so excited. It was, you know, I worked so hard to get there. And finally, I was building my little team of coaches and I was so excited. And Chrissy and I, um, decided that maybe it was time for me to um, create my own team page. So I did. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I got to be honest with you guys. I'm like so computer illiterate and technology. I'm just the worst with all of it. So it literally took me like eight days to upload my cover photo. <laughs> And, you know, I, I was thinking about, wow, you know, now I'm going to have this team and, you know, what is my team going to be called? And it kind of forced me to think about what my vision was for the people that I wanted to connect to. And um, I ended up naming uh, my team Team Fierce and Fab because I have a little bit of fierceness in me, a lot of fierceness in me. And I'd like to think that I have a little bit of fab in me, a little bit of sass. And, um, that's really um, everything that I wanted my team to encompass. So um, there was the birth of Team Fierce and Fab, and I was really, really excited and on top of the world. And I just couldn't wait to share this with everybody and grow. And a month later, um, after hitting diamonds and starting my team page and getting things um, up and going, I was diagnosed with stage three cancer and um, everything like kind of came down crashing and um, you know I was on top of the world and then all of a sudden like I didn't think that I could have um, sunk any lower and after the dust settled you know I really had to start to make some important decisions um, I was faced with chemo 
and um, I was faced with 12 rounds of chemo. And I remember thinking to myself, you know, I don't know how I am going to focus on fighting for my life and then building this team and this culture and, you know, running this business that I love so much that is just really coming off of the ground and I'm so excited about. So, you know, I had to do a lot of soul searching and I decided to, um, you know, go full steam ahead and run them, you know, run them in parallel. And um, I did. I, I went through cancer and um, I was very vulnerable. I still ran all of my challenge groups and I still coached all of my people. I, uh, I took a month off, um, which was the month of my diagnosis. It was really like two weeks off where um, one or two of my coaches actually picked up the slack and kind of helped me just until the dust settled. But um, you know, I was vulnerable and, um, I would still work out every day. And even if I had to muddle through, I remember I was doing Kyle and I was still posting and I lost my hair and my eyelashes and my team was the one, um, you know, the, the group of people that really picked me up when I was at my lowest. And that is honestly guys, why I am so passionate about team culture, because, um, I can, I see now I see now what a beautiful thing um, this is that we're all a part of. And I see that there's something really magical about this. And um, that's why I'm so excited to talk to you about this today. So I don't want to go um, too much more into my story, but I thought it was kind of important for you to kind of hear where I came from and why I love this so much. So. Um, our monthly groups are really the crux of our business, right? So I want everyone to take a minute and I'm going to be one of those weird speakers where I ask you to close your eyes and do something for a minute, but I'm going to ask you to just quickly close your eyes and take a minute right now. And I want you to think about what you felt like during your first challenge group. So I want to know where you were mentally, where you were emotionally. Now you can open your eyes. <laughs> I see people like half peeking. Is everyone really closing their eyes? Um, so I'm sure everybody had a mixed bag of emotions, right? I mean, you know, this is something unlike anything that we've ever done before. I know that I was a part of lots of different, um, you know, weight loss things, and this was just so different for me. So I'm sure that many of you felt the same way. I'm sure you were probably like, what the hell are these sweaty pics? Like, I don't even know these people, and I'm posting sweaty pics. But I'm sure that the emotions that kind of rose to the top when you closed your eyes were, you know, you were feeling motivated and supported and empowered and confident and feeling worthy um, and just on top of the world and confident. And those are the best feelings ever. Those are feelings that we want to bottle, right? And that is the kind of vibe, guys, that you honestly want for yourself every month and you really want for your challengers and your coaches every month. Why? Because it's our job to show people that taking care of themselves can feel amazing and literally change their lives. So we want to create a sense of community and a sense of value to what we do so that we are really fostering lifelong challengers. So that is our goal to, um, you know, make things fresh and exciting every month and get people excited about what we do. And that leads to an amazing culture for your team because those lifelong challengers are ultimately going to be your team. So I want to give you a second to just grab a piece of paper because I am going to give you some um, little tips as to how to now grow your team culture. So if you don't have one, just you know, grab something quickly. I'll give you a second. All right. Now at the top of the page, thanks, Mel. <laughs> at the top of the page, um, I want you to entitle this, Ways to Create a Kick-Ass Vibe. All right. So the first step in creating a team culture and this kick-ass vibe is what I call the mirror. Okay. So everybody write that down, the mirror. So the first person that we have to look at as a coach is ourselves, right? We have to look in the mirror. And the most important thing is being a product of the product because when you are utilizing the products, when you are in the trenches with your coaches and challengers, 
you are um, showing them that you're practicing what you're preaching, right? And that's building trust. So every single month, choose a program that you're going to be excited about. You know, when I set up my um, doc for my coaches to sign up as to who's going to be in the challenge group that month, I not only have them, you know, put their name under the doc, but I also have them commit to a program. So it's even like a week or so before the challenge group starts, I have them commit to a program because that just heightens their accountability. It gets them laser focused. Okay, I have to commit to this. It's going to be down on paper. I'm going to have to post it underneath this, um, you know, sign up doc. I'm, I'm going to be laser focused with this program this month and it just it adds to that accountability it gets people laser focused even before the challenge group starts so make sure that you're excited about whatever program you choose for the month even if it's you know an eight-week program and you're doing the second eight weeks make sure that you have that kind of down and finalized before the challenge starts because it gets you excited about that you know about the month Share your journey with all of your people. So, you know, be in the trenches with your challengers, with your coaches, you know, live it and breathe it. Be one of them. I don't care if you've been coaching for five years, if you've been coaching for three days, you know, we are all a part of this health and fitness journey. And, you know, it's really important for our challengers and coaches to see that we're in the trenches, to, to you know, see that we have, you know, great days and then we have really ugly days. And it's important for them to see how we face adversities and how, you know, everyday stuff happens to us. We have kids, we have jobs, but this is how we kind of navigate around those things and make it work for us. You know, they're learning from us. And that vulnerability is something that we are modeling for them. And we are, you know, by being in the trenches with them and showing them that we're living this too, we're breaking down their walls. We're building a trusting environment for them. We're showing them that, um, you know, we're, we're experiencing the same things as they are. And I really truly feel like, you know, those behaviors that you're portraying in your challenge groups and with your coaches, that's what creates a trusting environment and you're practicing what you're preaching, right? And that's what people look for. They want to see that you're not only talking the talk, but you're walking the walk as well. So your goal is to look in a mirror and ask yourself, am I doing what I expect my people to be doing? If you are, fantastic. If you're not, tweak it because it's very important. Um, the next step in creating team culture and your kick-ass vibe is what I call the plan. And Chrissy and Dave always use this line, um, proper planning prevents poor performance, right? And that's something that we talk a lot to when we're talking about um, Sundays as being our food prep day, right? That proper planning prevents poor performance in the week. Proper planning of how you're going to fit your workout into your crazy schedule is going to prevent poor performance. Well, the same goes for, you know, you being a coach to new challengers and to coaches under you. You have to have some sort of plan. People feel safe when, um, you know, when, when you know what you're doing. <laughs> so, you know, each month, should be completely fresh and exciting. And for many of us, we've been in these challenge groups month after month after month. And if we don't have a new plan and we don't keep things fresh and keep things updated, people will get bored. I mean, that's inevitable, right? People will get bored, it'll get dull, and what happens, they shut down. And that's exactly what we don't want. We wanna keep all of those amazing feelings that we talked about you know, bottling up in the beginning of this phone call, right? So we want to keep all of those amazing high feelings that you felt when you were first in your challenge group. We want that for you every month, and we want that for all of your coaches and challengers every month, right? Because we all want to be lifelong challengers. So how do we keep things fresh and exciting? We have to have a plan. So I'm just going to give you an example of, um, you know, my overview of typically what my plan looks like. So every month, um, 
you know, a couple of, of um, weeks, I would say, before the new challenge group starts, I always like to think about the upcoming month. And I always come up with an umbrella theme for the month. So I make a plan for like an umbrella theme. So I'm going to give you um, an example of one of my favorite months. And that was this past February. I love the month of February. Two of my kids were born in February. Valentine's Day is my favorite um, holiday, believe it or not. So, um, you know, February I was excited about. And I entitled it Fall in Love with Yourself February. And um you know, for this month, and you know, I've been running my, my challenge groups now for two and a half years, so I, I try to always keep things new and exciting. So I'm always trying to add layers onto um, my challenge groups. So for the month of February, fall in love with yourself February, I wanted to kind of encompass like the whole um, being. It, it, as I guess you can say. So not only are we focusing on nutrition and health and fitness um, and getting to our goals, but I also wanted people to feel like, you know, they're worthy because so many times as moms or dads and, you know, working people, we feel like we're always on the back burner, right? So I wanted to really open up my challengers and coaches eyes to the fact that, you know, there's other ways to nurture themselves. So fall in love with yourself. February was kind of the umbrella for the month and then what we did was we broke down each one of the four weeks with a plan okay so week one really the skeleton of what my month always looks like is the same but then um, you know the theme is is kind of woven in um, every month depending on what it is so week one for us is all about pre-gaming always so we always have the plan that week one for our challenge groups is going to be pre-gaming and that's when we get acclimated to the programs and the nutrition guide even seasoned coaches act like new challengers we're all taking our our measurements we're all taking our baseline weight um, I have everybody go out and get a really beautiful journal and I have them label it my journey and I encourage them to um, not only use it to put their stats in every week, but also to use it to, um, you know, talk a little bit about how they're feeling, journaling their feeling because ultimately this is their health and fitness journey and it's kind of cool for them to look back if, you know, they're, they're in it as lifelong challengers to look back to where they started. So I always encourage them them to um, get a journal and um, you know journal some of their feelings um, we print out trackers everybody posts trackers every day um, they're responsible for tracking their food every day I actually um, was um, was running out of color ink here and um, I laminated my tracker so I got smart <laughs> so now I just do the dry erase but we all have trackers every week that's part of pre-gaming that's the time, week one, where I'm really encouraging um, the group support and encouraging people to interact with one another and to like and comment on people's pages. That's when people are getting acclimated to posting sweaty pics. And you know we wanna make sure that we're going above and beyond with making people feel comfortable because sweaty pics are really scary, especially for the first week. You know They become like second nature after like the first or second week. But you have to think about the first time that you've ever posted a sweaty pic. I mean, I remember remember doing like 20 takes like I wasn't sweating anymore by the time I posted my picture so you know all of these things we have to remember and um, you know think about and and kind of foster that comfort level um, we always kick off week one with some sort of motivational video too which complements um, whatever the theme is so that's what week uh, one plan looks like. Week two is always food week for me, um, and that looks different according to the theme, but for February, we did some cute things like, um, you know, post some recipes we love and how can you make them healthier versions. So that kind of fosters some interaction amongst the group. Um, we have people post trackers. They're, they're tracking every day, which is kind of cool because, you know, um, we learn from one another. You know, people are watching each other's trackers and you're, you're thinking to yourself, oh my goodness, what a great idea. She had this for a snack. I think I'm going to try that. So it just kind of fosters that communication among each other, which is what we want. There is that team culture, that com comfortability. 
we do silly things like recipe wars um, during that week or, you know, try a new snack or meal idea challenge. Anything that you could possibly do to encourage fun and active engagement because you want to foster a sense of community. Um, week three is always motivation week. Our plan is always to motivate people in week three because by week three, that's when everything starts to fizzle out, right? And you need that extra oomph, that extra motivation to keep you going and keep you exciting, excited. So this, again, can look different every month. Um, one of the things that I love to do that I really just started doing about two months ago was integrating personal development into this week. Um, I was one of those people who thought that I didn't have time for PD. <laughs> I was probably like the biggest pain in the neck with, with PD. You know, I have three kids. Now I have two jobs. Like, when am I going to sit down and have time to read? And now I actually feel like I crave it. Like, I can tell my mood when I do my PD and then when I don't do it. I'm like off, all off. And, you know, my head's going down a really bad path when I don't get that, that mental Bill. And I want that for my challengers and my coaches, but I also don't want to overwhelm them. So what I do is I kind of weave in little PD clips that have to do with whatever that theme is for the month. So it seems really light and fun and they're small enough where, you know, people can watch them um, quickly and it's not too um, oh, you know cumbersome and it's not going to take up too much of their day but they're getting little bits of, of you know mind feed really which is what people need um, I ask challengers and coaches to post their daily motivation you know the more you ask people to engage um, the better the interaction is, the better that, that community feel you get. And I also feel like, you know, asking people to, to um, you know, post their motivation keeps them remembering why they're doing it. And they're forced to remember why they're doing it all week long. So, you know, people might post a picture of that little black dress that they want to get into or um, a bikini that they bought for their spring break trip. Or I've had people actually post their health records. Um, you know, as, as a reminder of why they're doing uh, what they're doing. So it also helps people kind of kind of learn about one another. You know, it, it serves as like a springboard for some conversations and, you know, for some commonalities um, among, among challengers and coaches so that they can, you know, get to know a little bit about who they're spending the, the month so intimately with. Um, we ask a lot of reflective questions. Again, that fosters engagement. I've done things like um, motivational buddies. I love to do that where once in a while I'll whip out um, a, a surprise video and I'll say, surprise, you know, I've, I've hooked you up with another teammate and I would love for you to get to know each other. And we call them motivational buddies. I use an app called Photify. And basically I go into my members and I, in my group, in my channel, Challenge group, I go into members and I partner people up. And I don't partner people up according to friends. Um, and like, I, I would never partner a coach that brought this challenger in. I like to partner um, different people because I want to foster new relationships. Um, I love to use FlipLip. If you don't have um, the app FlipLip and Healing in Booth, you have to download it. I promise you it's like hours of fun. And um, uh, Kimberly Shamil is saying she loves Buddy Week. <laughs> I know, Motivational Buddy Week, Tracking Week, it's so fun. So anyway, um, lots of fun little ways to add humor into the group too because you don't want things to be too serious. So you have to make sure that part of your plan is adding humor into um, your challenge group for, for um, you know, the four weeks because, you know, life can tend to get really, really intense in the outside world. So, you know, I've been known to uh, randomly throw a helium booth, <laughs> a helium booth silly video up and, um, you know, just get people smiling, you know, on a random Tuesday. They might be, uh, you know, in a really intense business meeting and they walk out and then they see something silly and they laugh and they're reminded that they have this amazing community of positive people, you know, virtually supporting them. So yes, Flip Lip and Helium Booth. I see people asking questions. Flip Lip is one and Helium Booth is um, the other app. 
So basically, you just want to do whatever you possibly can to foster that engagement. And week four, um, the plan is always uh, the wind down. This is where we share transformations. Um, you know, sometimes I ask people for transformations, but I'm realizing now um, that our culture is growing. People are feeling a lot more comfortable just randomly posting. So sometimes on a Tuesday, people will just post their transformation pictures, and that will kind of, um, you know, snowball into other people posting. And all of a sudden, we have this amazing split flash of all of these before and afters, which are so motivating, especially for new challengers to um, be seeing. We always focus um, during week four on what has changed for them this month. Again, fostering that, um, you know, that reflection within themselves, um, allowing them to see how far they have come in four weeks, and again, allowing for people to support them and love them through um, the journey. Uh, we always have a call to action plan at the end of um, our four weeks. We invite them into our challenge group to keep the mojo going. Um, so basically, guys, making a plan each month really helps keep challengers motivated, keeps things fresh, keeps everybody on their toes. They never know what to expect, and that's the fun of it. I, I never, ever, ever have one challenge group that looks the exact same the next month. I would get bored like that and I feel like, you know, I would just start losing the momentum of and the excitement of the team. So I really try to get as creative as possible and try something new every single month. Okay. Um, another important piece, now we're on three. So we had the mirror, we had the plan, and now um, the third important piece to creating a kick-ass vibe and team culture is called the recognizer. And this is my ultimate favorite, favorite tip, okay? So if you wrote down nothing else, make sure that you write this down because it's so important. Guys, people feel amazing being recognized, right? Even if it is for the smallest thing, acknowledge anything and everything that you can find um, with your challengers, with your coaches. Some of the things that we do in our challenge group is, um, you know, we 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 feature uh, weight loss milestones and we congratulate weight loss milestones. Just this past Saturday, I think that there were like, you know, 10 to 12 different weight loss milestones. And the cool thing is now everything that I have done is now become um, reproducible from me to my coaches, to their coaches and their coaches. So I was like sitting there on Saturday with the biggest smile on my face because, you know, some of my new challengers had weight loss milestones and I use the app Photify and I pretty up a picture of them and I, I say something cute like, congratulations, 10 pounds, um, you know, gone forever. And we do cute things like that, just cute weight loss um, shout outs. And then I log on and I'm finding that, you know, some of my coaches were doing it for their people and some of their coaches were doing it for their people. And Saturday we had like such an unbelievable um, just stream of weight loss successes. And it was just such a great feeling to see. And it just got everybody so excited for, you know, the next week uh, coming. And we just all want to kick ass now because there was so much success last week. And we're all so proud of one another. And everybody was so excited for each other. And we were all cheering each other on. So, um, you know, any kind of weight loss success, um, we have celebrated that way through um, live videos. Sometimes I'll just pop on a live video and I will congratulate people with their weight loss success. Sometimes, like I said, we do photify pics and uh, take a picture of them and we, um, you know, add little fun fonts and fun um, words and stickers and stuff. You can get really, really creative with that app. Sometimes we have even, um, hi Sadie, how cute. Sometimes we have even uh, printed out certificates, like real awards where we present it live or we present it in a video and then we actually mail them out to people um, so that they have it to keep for Ever. And we frame it and send it out, and it's something really special to, um, you know, note their their success with. Um, 
we do a uh, coach and challenger spotlight of the week. So, you know, all of us have those coaches that are just so positive and always showing up every day and always liking and commenting on everybody's posts. You know, they deserve to be recognized. So give them a shout out. Um, random shout outs like birthdays. Uh, you know, if you have um, somebody who, uh, you know, is getting married, celebrate that. You know, anything that can foster a family feel and show people that you care about them. Um, you know, in the group, but you care about their real life too, not just about their health and fitness journey, but that they should feel comfortable bringing their life into this group because it really, there is such an intimate bond that we share um, month after month. Lots of beach body anniversaries we celebrate as well. Um, we celebrate rank advancements in our challenge group. I think it's really, really cool for um, new challengers to see their coaches rank advance. I feel like it um, gives some street cred <laughs> to uh, the coach that has rank advanced and um, I, I just think it's another positive thing that should be recognized both in my team page and in my um, challenge group as well. It just makes people feel good. It shows that our team is on the right foot. Um, so recognizing people really supports their confidence and their self-worth, and it makes them feel like they're part of a family, which is really important. And there's that kick-ass vibe. There's that culture that we're talking about, right? When people feel confident and worthy, they are really more apt to inspire others too. So you just want to fuel them. You know, if you see that they're doing something good, um, just like in the classroom, I'm a teacher, that positive reinforcement goes a long way. So um, I'm winding down. I have one last tip um, that is important to creating this awesome uh, kick-ass vibe and team culture. And this is what I call the inviter. So you really want to make your challengers and coaches understand that they are part of something bigger. They're part of a family. They are part of this fit family. And, um, you know, you're all working together and just loving each other. So invite them in. And what do I mean by that? I don't care, guys, honestly, if you have two coaches under you. Invite them to a team dinner. I'm actually having one on um, Saturday, right before Super Sunday, which I'm really excited about. We had one set up for um, January, but we got snowed out. So this is our snow date, uh, which is this Saturday. So I'm looking forward to being with my team and just sharing a meal together and seeing each other face to face and showing everybody that, I, you know, I care about them. And, um, you know, I want to meet up with them and hang out with them and, and you know, break bread, <laughs> I guess you could say. Um, invite them to share their vision with you. Make them feel comfortable, you know, talking to you about what they want out of this, you know, where they're at. Um, do they see themselves working the business? Do they want no part of working the business right now? Do they want no part of working the business right now, but maybe down the road that they might, you know, invite them to feel comfortable talking to you about where they're at um, business-wise, where they're at health and fitness-wise, um, you know, that, that voice commands um, thing, that new messenger voice command feature is amazing because, you know, you don't even always need to get on the phone with people now. You can just shoot a quick voice message and there's something so intimate about hearing somebody's voice rather than just seeing text back and forth. So I use a lot of that um, voice command because, you know, they can hear um they can, they can hear the love behind my voice uh, when I answer them, you know, through voice command rather than just text. Invite them to feel free to post freely in the group. Um, you know, I love to see when people are uh, posting questions, you know, and, and there's other coaches jumping on those questions and answering things for people. I have people now, you know, randomly um, posting inspirational videos and um, old school, you know, just to be silly, old school Jane Fonda workouts and silly things just because they feel comfortable enough and they feel engaged and they feel a part of this family that they feel comfortable enough to do that. And that's such a wonderful thing. So invite them into all of that, guys. You know, and I have to say that I feel like the biggest thing is treating people like people and validating the fact that, you know, take it from me and my story in the beginning. You know, I didn't expect things to um, hit me the way they did when I got diagnosed. But, um, you know, I took that adversity and I kind of worked around it. And, you know, everybody that is on this journey, especially if they're going to be with us 
for the long term, they are going to run into some sort of challenges, even if it's smaller challenges and it's like kind of like the day to day stuff. You know, it's important that they feel validated and the fact that, um, you know, they feel like you care. And then it's our job to kind of gently guide them into continuing to move in the right direction. But people need to feel validated. And I honestly believe that, um, you know, as coaches, we want to give people the wings to fly, but we always want to give them a safe nest to come home to. So, you know, I guess all in all, um, for me, I think that the success of challenge groups, um, you know, and building this kick-ass team culture, like I always say, may look really different for everybody. But I think it comes down to your vision and what you want for your team and your people and what your expectations are. So I know I talked a lot. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions. I know I, got, I gave you a lot of information tonight. That was awesome, Cal. Really yeah. good. You know what? Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, once somebody had said to me that teachers make the best coaches, and I tend to agree, but, um, and it's definitely, it's the creative side of you. It's the side that truly, you know, you went into teaching to help kids, right? And, and, and coaching is not different. You go into coaching so you can help other people and, and give them value and just give them what you've gotten from it. And I think that that's, that's what we always have to keep in the forefront of our mind, you know, the engagement, the recognition, and the making them feel valued and, and a part of something so special. And I think that's, that's what you do. And, and I think that's such an important piece of the puzzle with us being successful in our, in our coaching business, even if we're not working coaches, you know, any, any of us to have that team culture. Awesome, awesome information. Does anyone have questions for Cal? Um... You are a wonderful, great presentation. I love how you created this kick-ass culture. Your energy is contagious. Thank you for sharing. Proud to be part of your team. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know if they have any questions, Cal. You just nailed it. Yay, thank you. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. All right. I think I have 10 pages of notes. I'm sorry. And I know I was talking so fast because I didn't want to let, I didn't want to keep you guys on too long. I know everyone's tired. It's Monday night. Michelle's cursing. All right. So without further ado, we are going to wrap up. Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Thanks for joining us. If you do have any questions um, and you think of them later, you can always post them in the team page and tag Kelly. I'm sure she'll answer. Um, and the team call recording will be up tomorrow. And do you have anything you want to say? Dave popped in. Hello, hello. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> I got the tail end. I just walked in the door. So thank you. You're welcome. All right, guys. Have a great night, and we will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.